Next, we're going to look at derivatives. So, um, if you remember in the, in the previous section, uh, we ended with a discussion of sort of displacement and average rate of change. And so let's think about what that looks like. And I'll draw things in the plane just to simplify or even just leave out the coordinate system maybe. Um, so imagine I've got a curve and it's given by some vector valued function. So here's the graph of my vector valued function. Okay. And I've got a couple of points on that curve. So let's say I've got um, this point here. Let's call that R at T naught and some other point on the curve. I can draw the vector for it, right? R at T1. Okay. And so we know that the displacement. displace on that integral from t naught to t1 is just d, which is a vector quantity, right, a constant vector quantity, and it's just the difference. Right? And so we can draw that difference through that tip-to-tip -tip rule for difference, right? Here's that displacement d. Okay. All right. And, and then we can say, well, the average change, right, or average rate of change, well, we say, well, that's the displacement divided by delta t, where delta t is just the length of the interval, right? And so that average rate of change, you know, let's, let's I mean, I don't know, pretend that t, t naught and t1 are relatively close together. Let's say difference is less than one. Um, well, that's, uh, actually, if that difference is less than one, we're dividing by a number less than one, so we're getting something bigger than one, right? So then the, the average rate of change might look something more like this. So that might be d over, over delta t, right? Um, but then what you, can, what you can do is you can say, okay, well, what happens if we sort of let delta t go to zero, right? Usual kind of derivative story. What happens if we kind of take this vector here and we slide it along the curve until we get, we get closer, right? So if I'm, say, here, for example, right, if I'm at some much closer point, well, my displacement vector will be much smaller, but the delta t that I'm dividing by is also much smaller, right? And so dividing by a much smaller number rescales and gives me a much bigger vector. So I maybe get something like that, right? And, and then finally, you know, you can imagine that you can take sort of a limit here as delta t goes to zero. And you can also notice that these vectors, right, they are kind of they get closer and closer to sort of the direction of the curve. You want to think about that, right? And so we get to that single point, and as t goes to zero, what you get is, well, you get a tangent vector. Right? It's going to be tangent to the curve at that point. Awesome. Okay, so if you think about what's going on here, right, what we can do is we can define, we can define Well, um, the first thing we could define would be, let's say, the, the derivative at a point, right? And that's going to be, we'll call it r prime of, let's say, t naught. Maybe the book uses c, I don't know. Um, and, and just like usual with derivatives, we'll, that delta t, we'll, we'll call it h. So this would be the limit 
h going to 0, r of t0 plus h minus r uh, t0. So the displacement, when we change t by this little amount h, and, and then we divide by the length of the interval, which is just h. Okay, so that gives us the derivative at a particular point t0. Um, and then, of course, you can now vary the point and you can get the, the derivative uh, function. And that's going to be r prime at t. And, well, the only difference is going to, we would just replace t naught by t. Okay, that's simple enough. Um, and then you get probably the, the theorem you might expect. And if you want to prove this, it's simply a matter of applying this limit component-wise, because we've seen that you take the limit one component at a time. Um, if r of t is, let's say, f of t g of t, or maybe put an h in there if you want three dimensions, then r prime of t will simply be f prime of t and g prime of t. So we just take the derivative uh, component-wise just like we took limits component-wise.